this presentation is quite boring. You know, infrastructure is a very boring topic. You're not in sales, are you? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, people used to yawn at data domain stories and Palo Alto network stories, but there's good money, so, you know, we'll see. We, I think we're in good business. So that being said, you know, if you look at this movie, you'll realize that this was the biggest revolution in the last five years in the data center. In a long, long time, the biggest revolution. We very effectively decoupled state and intelligence from hardware, and in the process made it possible to move and create and delete machines and grow and shrink data centers at will. Virtualization came to become a panacea for the data center. Or did it? If you look under the hood, there's a massive strain on the legacy infrastructure, including storage. We have thousands of those things, the dynamic uh, virtual machines being moved and created and deleted with APIs and automation and what have you, that are, being, that are sharing a lot of this sleepy and static storage tier here, which maybe will give you, say, 500 volumes to work with. So 10,000 of those working with 500 of these, and they're sharing the fate with respect to performance and backup frequencies and snapshot frequencies and replication RPOs, RTOs, and RAID properties, and so on and so forth. And that is a big cloud killer. If you think about it, intelligence is very tightly coupled with hardware. And in the cloud world, you want to share the hardware, but you really want to charge for infrastructure, or you want to pay for infrastructure. What happened at Amazon last week was because EBS was one massive kitchen sink. And uh, it was everything for everybody. At the end, imagine if there was a case where you could pay more and hurt less. I think that would be a killer feature for cloud. So network storage as we know it was not built for virtualization. It was not built for cloud computing. And we haven't even begun to talk about another revolution on the horizon, solid state drives. On the network, they're akin to a race car that you insist on driving through Bay Bridge during the worst commute times. It's a wasted resource. And if you take this resource and try to put it in the server, say as a server attached SSD, it's a race car that's built for the racetrack. Sheer performance. There's no business continuity, no data protection, no high availability, none of those things that make it roadworthy or family worthy. So two of the biggest revolutions in the data center, virtualization and solid state drives, they're incompatible with network storage. We need to rethink this architecture. We need to make a case one more time to decouple storage intelligence from the storage hardware and push this intelligence higher up the stack, in the software, in the hypervisor, to make storage virtualization aware, cloud friendly, and make solid state drives roadworthy. That is the essence of Nutanix. That is what we actually set out to do 18 months ago. So collapsing compute and storage together is not unprecedented. If you look at the success of cloud generation systems, They've been doing this for like last five, seven years now. Google with its GFS, where they actually run MapReduce jobs, things like that. Increasingly, Windows Azure, there's hardly any network storage there. And a lot more Yahoo and a lot more Amazon. They actually build these pods. They, every pod is a server. There's enough compute, enough memory, enough storage. You need to grow it. You add another pod, and there you have it. So we want to take this goodness and bring it to the enterprise, make it merchant grade. Because these applications running on the compute tier were custom applications built for on-premise Google or Yahoo or Amazon or what have you. So what is it that Nutanix is really doing? Make a very good observation here. x86 hardware running there on the application servers. x86 hardware here, increasingly pretty much most of the new storage servers running x86. There's an opportunity to collapse the two tiers. And the vehicle to collapse it is not the plain old Veritas where you'd go and hack the kernels of HP, UX, and AIX, and Solaris, and Linux, and so what have you. It's virtualization. With virtualization, you can collapse the two, two tiers, shrink the data center, simplify a lot. And at the same time, you can deliver features extremely quickly. Because in the kernels of these operating systems, you couldn't have done a lot. But you can sit next to it 
and you can deliver all the enterprise features. So Nutanix's value prop is about blowing away the network storage. Saying at the end of it, you really have one tier. It's a common tier that runs applications and storage. And what we have built is a scale-out converged storage architecture. You can add more machines to it. It keeps growing. We have triggered this consolidation wave, which is vertical. You know, in the last five years, it was all about horizontal consolidation. Now we're seeing this vertical consolidation. Application servers need to sitting next to storage servers. And with that, you have a complete experience. Nutanix complete appliance with a dramatically lower TCO because you have shrunk data centers. You're talking about massively simple data centers. And at the same time, you get all the features that uh, enterprise-grade network storage systems are delivered. That is Nutanix. And with that, talk about the company. The team is uh, uh, Google GFS Architects, uh, Oracle Exadata, lots of people from Astra Data, uh, VMware Zen Source. And this group of people is fortunate to have uh, a lot of good advisors encircling them, including very senior people from data domain, uh, or ex data domain now, um, folks from uh, Palo Alto Networks, ZenSource, Coke, and Mark Leslie. We've raised 13.2 million Series A funding, launching in uh, second half of this year. The product is an appliance. We are willing to walk away from the business that's asking for software only, because there's value in delivering a complete solution, one throat to choke and so on. And the initial focus is workloads that are specific, like VDI, test and dev, Hadoop environments, or remote office branch office. Well, we're going to have to go to our uh, judges now.